properties of covalent compounds. When we're looking at the properties of covalent compounds, we have to think about the structure of a covalent molecule. So let's look at a structure here of a water molecule. And it's important to remember that this is a discrete molecule. By discrete, I'm saying that there's just one oxygen attached to two hydrogen atoms. So if we have a look at the bonding involved between the hydrogen and the oxygen, it's covalent bonding. And this is the intramolecular bond. Intra meaning within the molecule. If we have a look at the bonding that occurs between the two molecules, this is now the intermolecular bond. So the bonding between molecules. The intramolecular bonding is strong bonding. This is very difficult to break and requires very, very high temperatures to break. Whereas the intermolecular bond, in this case a hydrogen bond, but it could also be a dipole-dipole, or a dispersion force, these are very weak bonds. And these are the ones that break quite easily between these molecules. And just here's another diagram of water, and you'll see here the hydrogen bonds between the hydrogen and the oxygen molecules. And it's these that break when you put your hand into a jar of water. You do not break the actual covalent bonds within the molecule itself. So this gives it some different properties and the first one is that they are or they have low melting and boiling points and this is because the weak intermolecular forces are very easy to break. So let's have a look at my example here and I've got some water molecules and they're held together by these weak dispersion forces. Remember the strong covalent bonds in these molecules stay together to maintain that molecule. But it is these weak intermolecular bonds that break apart. So if I apply a force, such as my hand going into this jar of water, you'll see that the molecules will move around and rearrange. And the intermolecular bonds have broken and they've reformed again. However, the covalent bonds were not disrupted at all. They never get disrupted. These molecules maintain their discrete molecular cells. So the strong covalent bonds always stay together. So most covalent molecules will occur as liquids and gases. And this is because of the weak intermolecular forces again. So if we look at oxygen here, these oxygen molecules are not attracted to one another. They just move around separately and remain discrete molecules. There is very little interaction except for dispersion forces. So it exists as a gas at room temperature. They do not conduct electricity. For something to conduct electricity, there needs to be free moving charge, such as electrons or ions, and in this case, with covalent bonds, there's no free moving electrons and no charged particles. If we have a look here at carbon tetrachloride, you'll see here are the electrons, and the electrons are shared, but they're not free to move. They're shared between these different atoms. Covalent molecules will also vary in their ability to dissolve in water. Polar molecules dissolve in water quite easily. For example, ethanol. If you have a look at ethanol, this is the structure here, you'll see there's a polar group on the outside which sets up a positive and a negative dipole. This can then interact with water molecules which also have a positive and negative end. However, Non-polar molecules do not dissolve in water because there's no positive or negative end. It's no polar bonds, nor is the molecule a dipole, so it does not dissolve in water. 